This is Making Life Brighter, and my name is Winifred Adams. I'm here today with Lee J. McCloskey, otherwise known as artist, author, and painter, in his very own living library as we share a very special several-part series as he discusses his art. Join us as we step into, literally, a living 3D library. We wonder, uh, like in the Da Vinci Code, you know, the grail, what is the grail? What's the story? What's the mystery of the grail? And carrying the seed of that curiosity, the grail here, the chalice here, will tell us the story because this is the spines of the books of religion. And that's why if we stand in relationship here and you put your left hand here, your right hand here, do you see as, as you stand here, you become the outpouring, the figure eight, the loop of infinity. And why this is so essential is you're standing in relationship not to the knowledge of one age, but the knowledge of all ages. Mm -hmm. And this is the religion section. All of your books are still here. It's a library, nothing's <laughs> being lost. But in this embrace, we see the infant, the story of innocence. In innocence, we reach into all of these questions. And in the mind, this is what is so amazing. In it's the drop in the mind of this innocence turns out to be the encyclopedia of religion. I didn't plan for this. This is very much a revelation for me, which is when you think about, no wonder the species has had a hard time. This is a big question. All right, we're going to journey through all the gods and goddesses, all the civilizations, all the possibilities of what this might imply for the human being. And we're going to do it across the ages like the spin of an electron because we're going to gather it in one tradition and another tradition in one culture and another culture. And when we return home, we realize here, the mother says, I love all of my children. I give no one the right to brutalize any of them for any reason. And if you don't like the stories you're telling, tell better stories because they're all part of the living library and the library does not reject or exclude its authors. It says, put the story together in a way that you can hold and realize that you're the outcome of. So you're not protecting one book. You're actually allowing the ideas that are the best of all books to be the idea you're bringing home. And I wanted to create, again, uh, a visual story that would take us into this sense of the introduction of the characters, meaning let's not overstudy. Let's begin with first like a cast of characters, the empress. Begin to understand these figures in the psyche, that, that the characters of the psyche, that each of us are composed like a Shakespearean play of all of these different inward conditions. What the tarot allows us to do is to create an imaginative key where we're actually able to see in visual form the story of this deeper mythic and archetypal stream within us. And why the visual is so helpful, like this is the strength archetype, is we're able to really consider true strength, meaning, oh, I see, it's, she is essentially, her strength is within the inner pearl of great wisdom because this allows the natural forces that could devour her to live in relationship with her greater inward um, beauty and knowing. And that's why all of the, in a way, going back to, if we think about our first languages, they're picture languages. Mm -hmm. And that was part of my motivation, is I wanted to first create works of beauty, meaning that you didn't have to look at them symbolically, you didn't have to look at them in terms of, of their deeper import. This is the sun archetype, and everything, uh, in a way, works upon what has gone before, but in a way that is reassimilated and starts to bring up even greater depth. This is my world archetype. We see the Twin Towers, and this is dated 9-11-1986. So 15 years to the day, yeah. we see the falling away of the old Piscean Towers of religion and money, meaning the two kings that want obedience falling back to reveal her. And she says, as you return home, I remind you, you are an ancient tree and your roots are in all worlds. Therefore, as you know this, you will grow vertically out of this root, knowing, and you will begin to trust your sense of wonder. And this will overcome your fear of death. And this is what will bring you finally home because you realize it's not about death, it's about life. the 
this is the wisdom of the fool. So, and every and then every chapter is this story of this is the seed. But we can see how it's couched in terms of a quote, like uh, the Magus: "We begin with the seed. We begin with if the doors of perception were cleansed, everything would appear to man as it is, infinite." It's so Blake. beautiful. Blake, and we we yes. open. <laughs> you see, and this, and so it's very appropriate, my fellow Blake, uh, and this 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 um, uh, this seed, and let's have a drink. And so everything. Then the framing of the chapters were, really this, uh, like a like, again like a technology. Look at the image, the quote. That might be enough. If you're interested in the archetype, read the 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 article. But then if you want to go even more deeply, do you see? And this is where I said the Grail seal. Everything's sealed. And then it, it, I break it into the symbolism of the drawing. So okay. one can go into the specific drawing. Yeah. And every, every chapter then was created in this relationship of enjoy the, the quote, see the image, see where it takes you, go deeply. Remember, it is about beauty and meaning and about nourishment. So be nourished. Mm -hmm. and, and, and also, I would say, in the back of this book, um, I created a suggested uh, reading that uh, bibliography, but also a suggested reading section that lists about a hundred books that when we think about, well, how do I cultivate a foundation in this deep knowing? How do I really explore perennial wisdom, the wisdom tradition, the wisdom of fellow artists and thinkers? And I said, I'll put this in a way where we can just say, because this was Your really sort of, yeah, the sort of the crown jewel. Oh, the tower. Yes, indeed. Tell us about the tower. The tower, uh, and let's go to the larger image because this image, this story of the tower, and this is one of the ones of the archetypes that's very helpful to understand why we're composed of such vital energy, but this energy overwhelms us at times. And the story of the tower is really, you can see how this even looks a bit like a nerve ganglia, but the story is this battle within the self that finally we begin to understand that across uh, the journey or through the journey that finally we will become as this naked figure holding the lightning bolt, meaning that within this living dynamic, these living forces, that we will begin to understand and utilize our r the raw force of creation because the tower is the raw force of creation. It wills to form, to impregnate, to bring forth. And therefore, if it's not channeled through us, if it's not given uh, room to express itself through us, it's the same energy that builds, creates, and destroys universes. So when we put a lid on the tower energy, we really begin to understand the archetype of war, the archetype uh -huh. of, of destruction. And this is really, by, by journeying into this, we begin to understand how to make sense of our own neurology, our own wiring. Because the truth is that for true transformation, we must transform the very wiring that is part of our circuitry. And that's what this drawing helps us to it's understand almost taking visually. taking responsibility for that energy. Yeah. Yes. And, and transmuting it. Exactly. Yeah. And this is the energy of Mars. Now, Mars, ah. you think of the god of war. You think yeah. of the fertility. So this is a very potent and powerful uh, archetype. And one that if we could understand more energetically and depersonalize it, we would be able to navigate many of life's difficult circumstances because we would have a greater rapport, not, oh, this is about me, but more like a sailor going, no, this is a storm, and I have to learn how to navigate a storm, and the storm will teach me if I don't mm -hmm. take it personally. And that's why the tower helps. It says, I can help you navigate the truth that you are a universal being composed of universal energies and therefore give you keys to helping you understand how this affects you personally. You've been listening to Making Life Brighter with Lee J. McCloskey in a special three-part series. If you'd like to hear his inspirations on the radio show that we did, tune in to makinglifebrighter.com and the radio tab to learn more about Lee and his special living library. Thank you for listening, thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.